Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship tonight as we gather together on this Monday, Thursday, as Jesus comes to us again. Tonight, of course, is the night he institutes the Lord's Supper. Uh, he begins it and then commands its use to you and to me. And in accordance with his command, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper tonight as well. Our order of service is outlined in your worship folder. We've been following witnesses to the passion, um, and tonight we talk about Judas, uh, because of course tonight is also the night that Judas betrays Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stand up, say good evening with one another. When you're finished, you may be seated, because if I remember, we're singing a hymn immediately. Hi, Davis. You may be seated. For those of you who weren't listening to me in my directions earlier, you may be seated. Um, we'll begin our service tonight by singing the opening hymn together. Continue our order of service according to the worship folder that you've received. We begin this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On a night he was to be betrayed, Jesus rose from supper, took a towel, girded himself with it, and washed his disciples' feet. We come to our extreme memory of humble service. And, and to be strengthened to be servants like him. When Jesus commands us to take up the towel, how often we refuse. The task of service is too menial, too unpleasant, too inconvenient. Lord Jesus, forgive us our reluctance to serve. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread and the cup and gave himself to his disciples. We come tonight to receive Jesus again in his holy supper and to celebrate his gift to us. 
on Monday, Thursday, as we come to the Lord's table, we receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and for the strengthening of our faith. Certainly, there are times when we all betray the Son of Man. We all act carelessly and selfishly in the presence of our holy God. So therefore, let us confess our sins to God our Father. O oh God, we confess to you that we have sinned. We have betrayed you in our words, actions, and thoughts. We have acted carelessly and selfishly in your presence. We have been held that our Lord Jesus Christ would die to take our sins upon himself. And through him we have the assurance of forgiveness. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, have mercy and forgive us. Our merciful God has heard our plea for forgiveness and has offered his only son to die for our forgiveness. Therefore, by the stead and in the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, since you have left us a memorial of your passion in a wonderful sacrament, grant, we pray, that we may so use this sacrament of your body and blood that the fruits of your redeeming work may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our readings for this Monday, Thursday service. And our first reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of our Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. For if, but if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with the reading of the gospel. If you're able, would you stand for the gospel reading? The Holy Gospel for today is written in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 13, beginning with verse 21. It's this lesson that will serve as a basis for our message this evening. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table close to Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. 
Then, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to them. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, Judas immediately went out, and it was night. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having heard God's word, let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue now with our next hymn, and we'll sing together. Grace and peace to you 
from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All let long we've been following the account in the Gospel of John, and tonight, of course, is no exception to that rule. We pick up in John chapter 13. So when Jesus had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. This is the word of the Lord. Judas, Judas Iscariot. Uh, Iscariot actually means the son of Kareth. That's maybe significant. All the other disciples were from Galilee. Judas was the one who stood out who wasn't from Galilee. Judas, he was also the one who carried the purse, who acted as a treasurer for the group, for Jesus and for his disciples. It's Judas who had asked at Mary and Martha's house about the wasting uh, of the money for the ointment that Mary put on Jesus' feet. Why that wasn't sold and the money given to the poor. But we're told already then that Judas had an agenda. He was a thief, John said. He used to help himself from the money bag. Judas had a selfish agenda. He had been pursuing this plan for a while. He, it wasn't new for him. Maybe, we don't know, the entire three years that he was following Jesus. But see, now he couldn't wait any longer. He wanted things sped up faster. He wanted to have what he wanted, and he wanted it right now. Money, riches, he had already stolen from the treasury, but frustration, it breeds more frustration. And Judas wanted more, and he wanted more right now. And no one was going to get into his way. Why do I think he was frustrated? First, when we're stuck in frustration, we forget about the needs of others. Because we're in a hurry to get and do what we want to do. When our lives are stuck in a pattern of frustration, we run over others. We're inconsiderate toward them. We don't listen to them. We're in a hurry to do what we want to do. So Judas, he betrayed Jesus. For the paltry sum of 30 pieces of silver, he gave in to his frustration. He was so anxious to have what he wanted. He was so anxious to get what he thought he deserved that he ran roughshod over his friend, over one who treated him like a brother. He betrayed Jesus. Judas betrayed Jesus because Judas Iscariot, he was going to have his way. And he was going to have his way right here, right now. Judas was tired of waiting. Being stuck in frustration. Make no mistake about it, it is a sin. It's a sin because when we're stuck in frustration, we forget the needs of others. We're in a hurry to get what we want. We forget how others feel, but we also forget how God feels. We have decided that we're going to do things our way, not worry about God's way, not wait for God to act. That's why being stuck in frustration is a sin. It makes us want to take the place of God. We quit following, we quit asking what God wants, and we decide we already know what's best. We decide it's time for us to take the lead. See, frustration makes us want to run in front of God, not to follow after him. It makes us second guess God. It, it tries to uh, force God to doing what we want him to do, what we want him to accomplish. 
what we want, not what he wants. Judas, he betrayed Jesus. His betrayal was a result of being stuck in living in frustration. It was a betrayal of Jesus, of course. But it was also a betrayal of God. It was a short changing of trust. It was short circuiting of faith. It was a realization for Judas that he could not wait. He wanted his way. So what do we do when we're stuck in frustration? What's the way out of frustration for you and me? How are we able to live with not able to being able to accomplish everything we want right now? We look not at Judas, but past Judas at the one to whom he betrayed. We, we look to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, to the, the pioneer and the perfecter who did finish the course that God set for him, who was faithful in all things. Maybe tonight it doesn't look like he's going to be able to accomplish what he came to do. Doesn't seem like he's going to be able to get the job done. That, that he came to do. If you're trying to teach men and women about the love of God and how God has called you to be his, it doesn't always look good to end up being nailed to a cross. If you're trying to persuade brothers and sisters to love one another and to love God, dying doesn't help the story. And yet, that's exactly what happened. That's the message of the cross. The cross of the Lord Jesus teaches us that we can become unstuck from our frustration. And we can become unstuck from our frustration because of the power of God. All we have to do is listen to the words of Jesus. If anyone wants to save his life, he will lose it. But if anyone will lose his life for my sake in the Gospels, he will find it. The message of the cross. If the issue with Judas is that he would push everyone out of his way to get what he wanted, then the answer with Jesus is he's willing to do all, even die on the cross so that others get. Not just what they want, but what they truly need, what they can't get on their own. He would give up, Jesus would give up all of his rights and privileges for you and for me. He wouldn't hold back. How does Jesus conquer frustration? He makes himself of no reputation. He takes the form of a servant and being made in the likeness of man, being found in the fashion as a man, St. Paul writes, he humbles himself and becomes obedient to death, even death on the cross. Can you see it yet? Jesus overcomes frustration not just his frustration he overcomes and forgives our frustration not by pushing us aside not by running over our needs but by giving himself to us by dying for our needs while we were yet sinners Christ died for us the godly for the ungodly doesn't look like a victory when he's on the cross doesn't look like a reason to rejoice. But listen again to Paul. He made himself of no reputation, becoming obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And therefore, for that reason, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He's not stuck in frustration because he chooses to give himself first for the needs of others. He chooses to love us before he would serve and care for himself. He can't become stuck in frustration with a mindset like that, with a love like that. It's not Judas. But it's Jesus. If the, if the issue with Judas is that he would even set aside God in order to get what he wanted, then the answer with Jesus is he was obedient. Obedient to give. Obedient to love. 
to love extravagantly and without limitation. He sought and found God's word. And in the garden that night, just before he was going to trial, Jesus would pray. And he really prayed. Not your, now I lay me down to sleep prayer, but his long, agonizing prayer. Let this cup pass from me. But not as I will, but as you would. Jesus was obedient to God. There were no shortcuts for him. No bed of roses, no sidestepping of the issues, just a cross. You and me, we often become frustrated in our own life, tired of waiting. There are goals that we push for, and sometimes it feels like we just can't get there, no matter how hard we try no matter how hard we push, and we're stuck in frustration. Here's the answer. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for many. Jesus Christ, who died so that we might live. Jesus Christ, who loved and loved abundantly and without limit. We can't come unstuck from frustration, unstuck from pain, unstuck from sin. Because we hear the cry from the cross. It's finished. It's finished. Hallelujah. It's finished. Amen. And may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's word, we turn to him with our prayers and the prayer of the church. Would you stand if you're able, please? Let us pray to the Lord. On this holy night in which our Lord gathered his disciples in the upper room, we come to you, O Lord, in his name with the concerns of our hearts for ourselves and for all people. Grant to us zeal for your house, O Lord, and love for the things of your kingdom, that your church may enjoy harmony and peace, and confess your word with one voice before the world. Cover us with the blood of Christ, and grant us your spirit, that we walk in your ways and do the good you desire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, give to your church faithful pastors and servants of your word, and bless us with willing ears to hear and believe and willing voices to speak in witness of what Christ has accomplished for us and for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. deliver us, O Lord, from temptation and fear, that we would rejoice in what is good and right according to your command, and seek to live holy, righteous, and upright lives as your children by baptism and faith. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. give us the blessing of good and faithful leaders who will act in accordance with your word, preserve us from harm, and grant the liberty to live according to your commands. Bless the members of our armed forces and all emergency personnel who act on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, give grace to the sick and to the suffering, and give your peace to the dying, especially those who we name before you in our own hearts and minds. Be with them, O oh Lord, if it be your will, grant them health and healing that they may be strengthened in trial and comforted in sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us by the grace of this Holy Communion, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood be strengthened in faith and comforted with the promise of the forgiveness of sins and the gift of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us in the footsteps of Jesus, that we may ponder your love as we behold his cross and rejoice in what his suffering has accomplished. Bring us at last with those who have gone before us 
that when Christ comes again, we who have received the foretaste of the feast would enjoy its fullness forevermore with Christ, in Christ, and through Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink from this all of you this cup is a new testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may be seated. We'll continue with the distribution of Holy Communion. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. Your sins have been forgiven. Amen.
preserve you in true faith and to life everlasting. Amen. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us, through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Receive the blessing that Jesus gives to you today and every day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We'll close by singing our final hymn, On My Heart and Print Your Image. supper on that first Thursday night, less than 24 hours remained in the earthly life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Events, they moved quickly. There was a prayer in Gethsemane. There was the betrayal by Judas. There was an arrest, a mock trial, painful beating, and then the trudge to Golgotha and execution. As Jesus' life was stripped from him in those last hours, tonight we strip our altar of the signs of life to symbolize his purposeful plan of redemption, of suffering and death for us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. The events at Golgotha snuffed out the human life of Jesus, the light of the world. And as even creation was dark when he suffered, so we removed the source of life from our altar. Jesus' offered body and blood have been given to us in, with, and under the form of bread and wine in the holy mystery that we call Holy Communion. As Jesus was removed from us in the grave, so we remove the vessels and the elements of this sacrament from our hearts. Our altar at church is in the form of a table where Jesus invites us to come to the feast. It's here where Jesus serves both as the host and the meal. And the coverings and the, the pyramids of the altar are made of fine linen and embroidery. 
materials appropriate for feasting. But as our king's body was stripped in crucifixion, so we strip our altar of its covering. Jesus' suffering and death wasn't a random accident. It was God's plan. God's plan for our salvation from the very beginning. God foretells this through his prophet David in his word. We hear Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you, our fathers put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions tearing their prey open with their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me, for they have pierced my hands and my feet. I count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouths of lions. Save me from the horns of wild oxen. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he is not despised or disdained the suffering of his afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations, and they will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. You're invited to join us tomorrow evening, Good Friday, as we stand at the foot of the cross and see the salvation that God has laid out for us. And we'll continue our worship then on Easter Sunday as we come to the empty tomb. Tomorrow, Good Friday at 7 p.m., Easter Sunday at 10.30. Uh, all those will be live and live streamed on Facebook as well. God bless you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.